friends this unit i'm going to be reading a book called book uncle and me book uncle and me by uma krishnaswamy illustrated by juliana swamy to young readers everywhere one the right book watch me zigzag after school every single afternoon between the bus stop and horizon apartment flats it's where my best friend Rini lives in 3B, and I live in 3A. Rini and I wave to our friend Anil. He karate blocks and punches at us through the bus window. It's his way to say, goodbye, see you tomorrow. The bus pulls off down the road. Bye, Jasmine, says Rini. Bye, Rini, I say. She turns to go home. I go zig, zig, zag off on my daily mission. Mind the crooked tree. Mind the Istria lady with her iron and heap of clothes. Mind the broken pavement and the pigeons cooling their feathers in mud puddles. Watch, watch, watch. And here it is. Book Uncle's Lending Library on the corner of St. Mary's Road and First Cross Street. With books spread out on planks of wood and a small tin can for donations. Just to help out if anyone wants to. Here is a sign in faded old letters. Books free. Give one, take one. Read, read, read. Perfect! In all of India, could there be a better corner lending library than this? Two, number one patron. Hello, Jasmine Ma, says book uncle. How's my number one patron? I don't know about number one, but I'm sure I am book uncle's busiest patron as I mean to read one book every day, every single day, forever. I started the last three years, right after I turned eight. That already feels like a billion years ago, because now I am past 400. Books, I mean. I returned yesterday's floppy paperback. Book Uncle beams at me through glasses so fat, they make his eyes extra big and extra smiley. Did you like it? He asks. He really wants to know. Of course, I say. I always do. I always like the books he gives me. He waves at the piles. Take another. Take another. Something different this time? He points to a thin book with a dark green cover. I take a look. It seems a little skinny. I pick it up. I open it. And for the first time ever, in all the time I've been getting books from Book Uncle, I am not sure. It looks too easy, I say. Short and sweet, says Book Uncle. Old Indian story. You can read it three times in a day if you like. I turn the book over and then over again. I can read bigger books, I say. Book Uncle looks at me sideways. He opens his mouth as if there is something he wants to say. Then he closes it again as if he has changed his mind. Finally, when I think maybe he has forgotten I'm still there, he says very softly, right book for the right person for the right day. As you know well, that is my motto. He's right. It is. It's a good motto. He has always given me the right book on the right day, hasn't he? I'll take it, I tell him. I waste no time. As soon as I have stepped over the broken bits of pavement, which I really wish the city would fix so I could walk and read without worrying about where to put my feet, I start to read the book. And I'm sorry to say that I was right. It is a story for little kids about a king of doves who gets himself and all of his followers stuck in a trap set by a hunter. At first, I'm disappointed, but then I think I'll keep going. Might as well find out what happens to those doves. There they are, caught in a net. I turn, turn, turn the pages. No escape, no escape. Try, try, try. Still no escape. Will they save themselves? Hmm, this may be a book for little kids. But still, it's giving me something to think about. It drives me crazy when a book does that. All the way up the stairs to 3A. I worry about those doves. I read the dove book once straight through, after homework and dinner, and I find out that the dove king and all his followers do get free. 
I know, I know. I'm giving away the ending. But here's the thing. The point of a story is not the ending. The point is, what does it mean? While I'm still wondering about that, my father calls me to see something on TV. Three, swirling t-shirts. It's a t-shirt folding contest, Wapa says. He makes room for me on the sofa. They fold t-shirts? They do. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Wapa, I say, why would anyone want to take part in a t-shirt folding contest? See for yourself, he says. There are all kinds of crazy people in this crazy world, my Minu. My mother laughs, including those who sit around watching those crazy people fold t-shirts. I whistle tweets. A dozen people on TV make a dozen rainbow-colored piles of t-shirts, their hands flying as fast as Anil's karate punches. It makes me dizzy to watch those swirling t-shirts. The room spins around me, and the air is full of t-shirts, and there is no ground under my feet anymore. I gasp and clutch at the sofa. Wapa pats me on the shoulder, and the room steadies. The whistle blows again. Everyone stops. The winner has folded 30 t-shirts in 60 seconds. That is only two seconds per t-shirt. That is fast, I say, able to breathe again. Blink of an eye, says Wapa. How long would it take me to do a thing like that? Many, many blinks, I think. Which reminds me of those doves and their king and the hunter. Where were these t-shirt folding people with their flying hands when the doves needed help? Wait, that isn't a story, and this is real? Give me a story any day. Uma says, you people want to practice folding clothes? There's a whole clothesline full on the terrace. Wapa turns off the TV. The phone rings. I'll get it, he says. He picks up the receiver with a cheery hello, but in a minute his face changes, so I know who that is. When he hangs up, he says, you know who that was. Wapa's big brother, Rafiq Uncle, always has that effect on us. He's coming to visit us? Asks Uma. Wapa nods. But he's coming on business. Maybe he'll be so busy, he won't have time to criticize. My mother shakes her head, as if she knows that Rafiq Uncle will always have time for a few well-chosen words to put her in her place. She goes into a flurry of worrying about all the things in the flats that will need to be dusted and mopped and polished. Suddenly, the only tube of toothpaste we have left, squeezed half empty, that wasn't even a problem until now, becomes just another sign of her bad housekeeping. I'll get some more, Wapa says. He escapes, leaving me to the mercy of Uma's duster. 4. Just a slogan. The duster is a weapon. Uma uses it against dust, clutter, and all signs of untidiness. I retreat to my room, which is what you might call a strategic move, just in case she takes it into her head that I need to be dusted off too. In the safety of my room, I try to make sense of things. Something is bothering me about that book, and it's not just a story. It's book uncle, I decide. Why did he give me that funny look before he handed me that book? As if he would like to say something, but couldn't find the words. He seemed distracted. That's it. As if something was on his mind. Is something wrong? Maybe I'm just worrying for no reason. I turn to the story in the hope that I can unravel its puzzle. How strange that such a skinny book can leave so many questions in my mind. I flipped the pages to see if maybe there was something I missed. Doves, king, trapped in a net, hunter, get help, get free, the end. So what? I say out loud. So what about what? Says Uma, brandishing the dust over my head. Help, I say, I surrender. No need, silly girl, says Uma. How about you help me instead? She points to a pile of books on the floor by my bed. Then she points to the shelf. Get my drift, she says. Oh my, I tell her. 
I get your drift. I get it fine. We get to work. She whisks the duster off over my shelf. I put the books away. While I do that, I tell her the story of the doves and the hunter. That's an old Indian story, Uma says. I know. Book uncle told me. But Uma, what's a big lesson in it? For me, I mean. I can't tell you that, she says. I can tell you what something means for me. How can I tell you what it means for you? Only you can know that. I tell her that book uncle's motto. Right book, right person, right day. So why was this such a great book for me? That's just a slogan, she says. Right book and all that. He just likes to say that. Don't take it too literally. What does that mean? Taking something literally? Yes. As if every word of it is true, she says. You know, it's just a catchy slogan. It gets more people to pick up a book. Nothing wrong with that. Don't take it too seriously. Then Uma looks around my room, nods her head, and moves on with her duster to the next target. Too literally? Too seriously? Is that how I'm taking it? Is it just a slogan? I don't think so. I think Book Uncle really does find the right book for the right person on the right day. That I am pretty sure about. Before I can arrive at any conclusions, Wapa comes back with enough toothpaste to polish up the teeth of the entire Indian army.